All right, welcome back. My name is Jason Underberg, and this is the Inside View. We have got an incredible guest for you this evening whose work has been featured internationally across the globe. A true pop artist whose work has been purchased by Kim Kardashian, Kelly Clarkson, Quincy Jones, Jessica Parker, David Copperfield, uh, the list goes on. Today we have the king of pop art, also known as Nelson De La Nuez, and we are going to jump right on with him right now. Hey, hey, Nelson, or should I call you the king of pop art? Well, I just took my crown off, so you can call me, you can call me just Nelson. <laughs> I think we'll start by calling you Nelson. Good to see you, man. What are you up to today? You know, I'm uh, just like any other day, I'm hitting over to the studio. I paint pretty much every day. The only difference is, is that I'm not going to have my studio assistant with me. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've, I've been quarantined, man, for almost the last 30 years. My life is, I just go from my home to my studio. I do my thing. You know, I love painting. It's, it's my, my passion. And so this so, is pretty natural for you. It is. It is. You know, the only thing is, is that, you know, my galleries, uh, for the most part, are, are all in lockdown. But, you know, the, the amazing thing is that they're still selling art, you know, yeah. online. No, I believe it. So, so, Nelson, your work has been featured in hundreds of galleries around the world. So before we talk about how you earned the title King of Pop Art, take us back to the beginning of your career in humor and parody art. Well, you know, I started my company, Art Juxtapose. Um, way back in the 80s. I wanted to do something different in the art world. So the the idea was basically was to take these pop icons and juxtapose them and put in, putting them in, in kind of a different scenario, you know, using pop culture art and advertising mascots. And, um, you know, I almost back then, I kind of worked like a movie theater, like like a not so much a movie theater, but almost like a studio. I was basically the director, the mm -hmm. head writer, the cinematographer, the set designer. So it was just doing something different at the time that nobody else was doing. Yeah, uh, this was way before Bansky. This was you know doing stuff out of the box, and uh, you know I hit. I hit something that a lot of people liked and it was satire, it was parody and uh, it was just doing stuff that nobody else did. And uh, you know, it worked. Uh, before you know it, I had a lot of people in the entertainment business follow me. I had the, uh, the director of the Tonight Show, Helen Brown, started collecting my art and then Carrie Fisher, Burt Reynolds, John Ritter, just, just a lot of people in, in that business that saw something different new you know it wasn't like a landscape you know uh, or any any of that and so you know i was just i was onto something put it that way yeah so were you always just a funny guy i mean growing up were you like the comical guy always kind of jokey jokester and this kind of evolved into that or was this something that just kind of yeah. came out of left field yeah, yeah. you know i've always thought a little different outside the box and it was the what if questions you know different types of scenarios you know of putting these characters in and making it fun making it different because nobody you know nobody ever saw the jolly green giants in in a different scenario you know right. i just matter i just sold nice niblets is the the title of the piece Ooh, i like that nice niblets Yes, it's featured uh, the job. So I'm still selling these pieces that I did way back 20 years ago, you know. That's great. So tell me about you know, Moza, the Museum of, uh, of or Moha. The Mo the Moha. Well, that was, you know, that was the whole point of it was to start the Museum of Humor Art, was to take all these icons and all these characters like Mona Lisa, Ronald McDonald, and just juxtapose them. And so that was basically the foundation. That was the idea of juxtaposing all these advertising characters and mascots. And so I wanted to do a nice acronym and call it the MOHA, the Museum of Humor Art. And, yeah, I love that. Um, I, I still have that. I still have the website. People still order. Um, 
you know, everybody now is so politically correct, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm just, I'm off the cuff, you know, I'll just no. everybody's up for grabs. Yeah. You know, you know one Every of my favorite, one of my favorite pieces from uh, that collection is Mickey's day off. Uh, actually, oh, let's take a look at that real quick. That's a classic. Yeah, th this is this is an absolute classic. Talk to me about this piece because I I absolutely love this piece. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration and where this whole idea came from. Well, you know that whole thing started. You know, being raised in Southern California, I came from Havana when I was seven. My parents would always take me to Disneyland, and you know, every time I entered the park, I would see this mouse, and he would be hugging people and posing and you know kissing people i mean it was just just out of control yeah and i mean this, this is me thinking as a 12 year old all right so i've always thought what is this mouse like when the park closes you know there's <laughs> your side to him you know what i'm saying <laughs> only you would the think that I, not any normal child at disney world exactly. with their family would think that but of course you know <laughs> Exactly. This is this is what you know comes into my mind. So uh, I <laughs> so uh, so this is just something that I started exploring back in I think I think Mickey's Day Off was 1994 1995, and so the inspiration. And then I also heard that Walt Disney kept an apartment right above Main Street that he used and you know and would just you know, basically sleep in uh, and not go home. And so I thought, Interesting. You know, maybe, maybe this mouse had the key to the apartment and maybe he would go in there <laughs> as uh, a uh, Disney, you know, secretary. And so, I mean, it's a very sinister side of Mickey. Uh, if you look closely, there, there are smokes on, in the bedroom, uh, right on top of the bed. There's so weird. There's a there's a Corona bottle right there at the ledge, and if you look really closely uh, outside the window, you know he's he's a little scared. He's not shaving. He's he got looks the a little scared. Yeah, it, it kind of looks like he's gonna get caught doing something that he's not supposed to be doing. When I look exactly. at this, yeah, exactly. And uh, so, and the reason why he's scared is because if you look closely through the window, there's Disney looking for him. Yeah, I see Walt. Walt is out there. Is that Walt back there? And he's like, right. oh, he's like, oh shit, the boss is coming. I better, you know, I better put my pants back on. Where's this? Where's this mouse? Where's yeah. this rat? I yeah. Although, so um, it's, it's classic. It's, still a, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, and, it, it uh, really is. It's it's an incredible piece of art. I got to be honest with you. So fast forward on the segue here. So you're, you're doing all this uh, comical art, you segue into pop art and ultimately earn the title, the King of pop art. So tell me about that transition. Well, it was a very slow transition. It was, it was, it was one of those transitions because I was already using pop art and I was already using these icons. So I started doing less satire and mm -hmm. more pop art. It okay. was, yeah, you know, I kind of, kept it all together uh, because I was still using these characters that everybody recognized, everybody knew, they all had legs, you know, everybody uh, understood who these guys were, but I was just using them in a different scenario. Uh, but it was pretty much just going from less satire and more, more of the pop art genre, which I've always been drawn to, because, you know, I grew up, I came here in 66, and I grew up with really a, just a lot of pop culture. And so pop art was always like in my blood. And so it was, uh, it was fun because I've always wanted to do that, but I wanted to do it kind of in a different way, adding more layers mm -hmm. to it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Coming up with something different, something unique, yeah. you know. Which I think and, you've nailed. You know, uh, I mean, unique is 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 certainly uh, the the right adjective. And and three of my favorite pieces, which I believe are some of your most popular collections, would have to be uh, Wall Street, The Good Life, and Material Girl. And and actually, Material Girl, if I'm not mistaken, was purchased by uh, Kim Kardashian um, for her former shoe company, uh, Dazzle Shoe Dazzle. So That's so let's start correct. from with let's start with Wall Street. Can we take a look at Wall Street real quick? This which is Wall this Street. Look the the. 
up market or the down market? You know what? I, I think this looks like the down market here, which is perfect okay. timing for what's going on in today. Tell us about well, the inspiration. The genesis of that came when I was doing my game board series. I was uh, exploring different mascots from different game board series. And I love, I've always loved Mr. Pennybags. I've always loved, you know, the Monopoly guy. And he stands for money, wealth, success. Sure. You know, that signifies. And so, you know, I think the, the great thing with this guy, and he keeps pretty much evolving in all of my pieces, is that you can use him for so many things. And so I thought, God, this guy would be great for the financial market, you know, for Wall Street. And yeah. so that was really... The, the origin of it. And then, you know, I keep using him, you know, he's, he's out one day on Madison Avenue shopping and he's buying, you know, I've Hermes seen this. And, yeah. yeah he's a busy guy. Oh. He's on boardwalk. He's over here. He's over there. <laughs> exactly. And the next day, the next day, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's out of money. Uh, the, the market turned the other way and, the boardroom panic, I used that piece as uh, actually the, the inspiration from that was from the 1929 market crash. Okay. You know, and so I thought that was, yeah, I mean, you know, that, that was something that people will never forget. So I thought it'd be great to kind of, you know, use that. But I've all, always used them in, in the, the, the up market as well, you right. know. But it's, it's been just a great series because everybody can relate to it you know the up and down market and, yeah uh, yeah yeah no I, I, it's one of my favorites like i said so the next one of my favorites is is the good life uh let's take a look at the good life all so, right so let's tell me a little bit about this piece here because um I, I mean it's it's pretty evident what's going on here but i want to hear from your version okay so the good life started really around uh, circa 2005 a lot of that was really inspired by my wife it's you know it's a very tongue-in-cheek bubble mm -hmm. darling all i require are fabulous shoes sure and but sounds you know, like my wife what I, yeah but i what i wanted to do with this series because i loved it so much i think it's very unique is i want for example if you look at if you look at it you'll see that I started off with a high school three hole notepad mm -hmm. as my back. So I wanted to bring in something different yeah. and which, which just brings a different element to it, you know, instead of just a white background. And then if you look at the dots, they're very pastel-y. The dots are like anchovies to food. It just flavors up the piece, you know, <laughs> yeah. for life. Sure. And, I'm not an anchovy uh, guy myself, but I, 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 I understand where I'm you're just, coming from. <laughs> it just it just flavors up the piece, you know sure. what I'm saying? And so, you know, in my colors like red, I use crimson, I use ruby, I use carmine red, I use a mixture of different colors to come up with that one red. Yeah. You know? Yep. So really put a lot of detail and a lot of thought with these pieces because they apparently you know once i create these pieces they're pretty much out of my hand you know yeah. i like i don't like to write a narrative around it i like to just do it and put it out there and just see what people think because yeah. you know the truth is jason when i create a piece i might think it's the greatest thing in the world but nobody really knows that until it gets hang in a gallery that's right and and see who purchases people, it pocketbooks and buy it you yeah know what that, that's that's interesting you say that with any art it's that's kind of the case right i mean even with Correct. us we produce a magazine we all love it inside but we wonder when it gets out there if anybody's going to read it absolutely yeah. this is also that uh i commissioned for uh shoe dazzle uh for kim kardashian's company so that's and this piece or or is that or is that the uh um... no, no i just changed the bubble they wanted to say all I require is shoe dazzle. Ah, okay. Let's take a look at that, that one here. Let that, me pull that one up quickly. Yeah. So, so this one, it, it, it's it's almost yes. It's very similar. And you're saying you just changed yeah. you just changed pretty much the content here. Yeah, for their lobby. Very cool. Now the other called the Good Life. Mm -hmm. 
and that is basically it's basically a girl that you know has flown coach and then she tried flying first class and she loved it and she'll never go back yeah you know yep and there are a lot of people out there that once they fly first class you know the luxury the food the, the everything about it you, you can't know? go back and you can't go back no you can't go you back know? and that's actually got me in a lot of trouble <laughs> this piece is also this this piece yeah it's this piece is also hanging at the delta lounge is that uh, right delta yeah delta corporate bought uh well they bought a lot of my pieces they bought pieces for the new york for atlanta and for lax very and nice so every time people go to the lounge they they see it and they resonate with it yeah and uh so we get orders from it i love it i love it so now um i think you're working on something new that's also evolved you're doing puzzle collections with uh tcg toys and you've also partnered with quorum watches and you're doing bubble watches um you're, you're yeah i'm trying to keep up here how, how are you doing all this and tell me about this new venture well it's it's tcg approached me about a year and a half ago and they said hey you know we love your work mm -hmm. i guess he in one of my galleries in new york and absolutely fell in love this is the owner and uh called me and says hey you know i would love to do a, a puzzle deal with you and you know the great thing with that is that not everybody can afford my art uh so i thought you know what puzzles are great to just get the image out there and my name out there yeah and these crazy times that we're in these quarantine uh you know everybody's in quarantine and what have you these these things have completely sold out yeah and so I'm very excited because we are doing four more new pieces coming September. Uh, and these are going to be some of my top selling pieces like, you know, pool boy, or not pool boy, uh, material girl. Um, what are the other ones? Um, gosh, um, let's fly away. Um, I, the good life is going to come out. And um, there's one more, um, Sweet Dreams, which is a great selling piece. And so I'm really looking forward to that. That's gonna, that's yeah. gonna eventually, well. And, and what about the, the quorum watches, the bubble watches? Tell us a little well, bit about that. That's so weird, that's so serendipitous because back, I forget, I think it was 20 years ago when they came out with the first quorum watch and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's this, you, you can't, you know, it's this unique bubble watch, which is completely different from every other watch. It's got a big face, which yeah. I like. Yep. And, you know, the weird thing about that is that years later, they relaunched the watch and they asked me to be a part of it. And so uh, it's a perfect fit. The shape of it uh, is perfect. The challenge that I had was, you know, I'm so used to, painting my average size canvas is 48 by 65 and so i had to basically now work with a very small face i, of I, a I watch. can only imagine you're going from a, a big canvas full creativity to trying to cram this you know big square into a small circle peg hole it, it's it's interesting yeah and so you got to be very careful what image you choose sure. and how you lay out the composition and the color, you know, the, the watch, the band is black. So mm -hmm. I incorporated, which I absolutely love. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing one right now, I is my Diablo. And Club Diablo came out from my Matchbook series. And uh, I loved it because of, of the black and the red and the, the devil character. Uh, and then the other one uh, was Happy Hour, which, comes in a bigger phase it's uh i think it's a 52 um I, I don't know if it's millimeter but it's just a bigger face and that that is just a great looking watch very and then great. i did a woman strictly for men very nice so so, so nelson yeah. so so it sounds like you're you're you got your hands full over here i got one more question we're just about out of time sure. but i have to ask um you've had so many celebrity collectors encounters you've met so many iconic people you've done such great things with so many notable uh public figures yeah 
Yeah. Who would you want to be stuck in the house with during this quarantine of everybody that you've come across? That's a tough question. There's so many people that I've met over the years. Um, I can think of probably three. Uh, David Copperfield. Okay. Uh, I would love to be quarantined with David Copperfield. That sounds like you, nonstop entertainment. <laughs> you know, not reveal his secrets. You know <laughs> right. that. Yeah, you get him drunk enough, he'll reveal his secrets. The other guy that comes to mind is probably Jonathan Winters, who is okay. a personal and just was just just out of control. But I probably, out of everybody that I've met, I'd probably say Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones. He, yeah, Quincy Jones. I had the privilege of meeting him a couple of years ago. And you talk about a guy that's just down to earth. It's Quincy Jones. And he's got so much history and so many stories. Very you know? cool. Like Everybody calls him Q. He doesn't go by Quincy Jones. Everybody calls him Q. So I said to him, I said, I said, Q, where'd you get your nickname? And he said, you know, Sinatra hired me to do a gig for him in Monte Carlo. And he did the gig, left, never heard anything from Sinatra for a, a, like four years. Then he gets a phone call from Sinatra. And the first thing Sinatra says, hey, Q, would you like to do something? Uh, would, would you like to go to Hawaii and work on a new project? And he's been with Sinatra. He was with Sinatra ever since until his death. But he's the thing with with Quincy Jones is that he's wise, he's an old soul, he's very insightful. So you'd have about two he, months to soak it in. Really Yeah, just. he 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 seems like he wants to know you. You know, yeah. he gave me his card and he says, here's my card, here's my address, here's my number. If you ever want to get a hold of me, give me a call. That's I mean, great. He does that. That's great. So yeah, so, just a real nice. So so thank you for sharing all these wonderful stories. With this is this has been an absolute pleasure uh, having you on the show. So we can buy the art. You can check out his website, kingofpopart.com. Um, you also have a great Instagram page at King of Pop Art. So make sure you uh, everybody out there starts following King of Pop Art. Maybe even buy a piece or two. Uh, Nelson, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you, Jason. It's been great. All right. Be well. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. That's all we got for you today. But join us next week as we have quite a treat for you. We've got Ring Girl, Maxim Model, Kiera Gomez will be joining us on the show. It's a show you probably don't want to miss. Stay tuned. We'll see you next week.